Hello, is that Damien? Hello, Damien. Damien Stammers, the man behind Pineapple Vintage. We talk at last. This is great. Uh, how are you? Yeah, fine, thanks. Um, yeah, well, right. I, uh, now, you, you may have heard, I'm sure you have, that uh, I'm releasing a fragrance. The Mr. Smelly fragrance is going to be coming out soon. You, you didn't hear of that? No. Um, well, anyway, it, it, listen, I was wondering if you might be interested in being the perfumer for the fragrance. I really love your work. I think it could be great. Yep. Right. Um, what's, what's the condition? Right, so you, you want to release two fragrances, one an intense version at the same time. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, six months later you want to release two new versions? Again, one intense with a slightly different name. No, I, I just really want to make one fragrance and have that be my fragrance and, and just release that and, and see if people like that. How about that? Hello? Hello? Hello everyone, welcome back to all of you in the Smelly Army. So, joking aside there, yes, the Mr. Smelly fragrance really is going to be happening, and uh, work is going ahead really quickly on that one. Of course, I, I haven't been talking to Damien Stammers of Parfums Vintage about it, I was just kidding. So, uh, today we've got a very, very exciting episode because we're going to be interviewing or having some questions and answers with Damien Stammers, the man behind... Parfums Vintage, the people who brought us Pineapple Vintage and many other great fragrances. A very, very uh, popular house at the moment and one that's really grown rapidly. I think it was 2016 when they first came out with uh, Pineapple Vintage and Pineapple Vintage Noir. And then there have been numerous other flankers and most people agree that that smells rather similar to Creed's Aventus, although you probably won't hear Damien Stammers making that comparison at all. Uh, it's an excellent fragrance in all its variations and I have been very lucky a few months ago to be sent the most recent iterations uh, of Pineapple Vintage and they are Emperor and Emperor Extract uh, and both of them are really really superb, very very good, uh, let's say inspired uh, fragrances with similarities to Creed's Aventus and very close to my 2015 batch. Really nice performance on both of them really, the Extract theoretically will last longer uh, but I wouldn't have any complaints about my standard version of Emperor that I've been wearing uh, a little bit more than the extract version. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that Eau de Parfum uh, officially. Great, great fruity, juicy fragrance. Really love it. Let's get into the interview though. That's, I think that's what you're here for. Basically, we've got five questions. It was about four months ago that I asked people for your questions. We've got two that are from me and then we've parroted or Damien has recorded his own answers. He has paraphrased the uh, questions a little bit. Uh, but I've just left it up to him to answer them and frame the whole thing really in his own way so that I wanted to get him on camera and I wanted him to be happy with the, the format that we use. So I'll just put my first couple of questions over to you, Damien, and then I'll let you, let you take it on in from there. So my first question is, how did you get into perfumery and what inspired you to start up Parfums Vintage? I got into perfumery because I had a love for niche higher-end products. And these were typically in the three, four hundred dollar price range. And I wanted to see if I could produce the same quality, but in more in the hundred dollar to two hundred dollar price range. And the, the typical business model of perfume companies is to spend a huge amount on marketing and promotional campaigns. And I, I really noticed that with one product in particular, they were a niche company. They had a, a highly complemented fragrance, but they weren't, they weren't really advertising. They were kind of too niche for that. So I basically set out to see if I could produce the same quality fragrance and let the quality of that fragrance basically sell itself. And, you know, sell itself by people buying it, people getting complimented on that fragrance and, you know, passers by asking, you know, wow, that smells incredible. What are you wearing? So the focus was always to start with the quality and having the perfumer making the decisions on the quality of the product. You know, no accountants involved in terms of deciding what musks to use, what grade of naturals to use. It was always setting out to aim for the best quality and the fragrance would do the rest of the work. So 
that's how I set out and you know today have over 40 fragrances in the range and quality will always be the focus there won't be any accountants you know dictating whether you know I can use this or this and you know if the price needs to increase to have the best quality products then the price will increase but the quality will never be never be compromised okay thanks very much Damien now uh, somehow he's very quickly uh, boarded a plane uh, and he's going to answer my next question and the next question is how on earth does it make sense to have so many different pineapple vintage variations uh, and particularly how does it make business sense to have that many um, basically to provide people with what they want so um, the pineapple range is, uh, is quite dynamic um, in terms of there are many uh, different variations on this theme and um, you know the, the feedback is quite clear that uh, some people prefer uh, more amped up elements of one ingredient compared to another so someone might like more of the uh, vanilla aspect of the fragrance where somebody else uh, won't like this note as much and wouldn't like it as prominent but they do like more of the uh, fruity pineapple notes or they like more of the smoky notes so instead of producing warm fragrance which um, you know does a poor job of um, meeting uh, these requirements I produce clearly labeled different versions uh, instead of you know 50 different batch variations um, which obviously is going to frustrate the, the customer so um, yeah I, I basically try and give people what they want which is uh, different amped up versions on a theme uh, and it makes business sense to do that because uh, you know there's many people that prefer different aspects of the fragrance so Okay, so thank you for the answer there, Damien. Now we're going to let Damien introduce the uh, next three questions that we took from the last video in his own words and answer them very much in his own words and his own way. Agria asks, what do you say to those that say that inspired fragrances undermine the originals and the work that the perfumer has put into those? Uh, I would say if you have that view then, buy the originals. I uh, have a huge collection of fragrances from you know all different huge brands and some of those fragrances are fantastic sometimes you will buy a second bottle and it's not quite the same now in most of those cases it's because the accountants in these companies are the ones who are showing the disrespect to the perfumers by giving a sub substandard product so if you live in a cliche world of you know originals versus inspirations and this is like a red line for you I would say buy the originals but I think that most people live in a world where you you know you weigh up the balance what's being offered has it changed and in that case you form an opinion Donny Darko asks since the release of the Emperor's are there more fragrances coming in the pineapple range or is that it now? There are more fragrances coming. Uh, since the release of the Emperors I got some feedback from some of the Facebook groups and based on that I've been doing some trials over the past few months. Um, this is one bunch of the 60 trials that I've done on the next version which will be more musky, have slightly more pineapple and more vanilla in the base. So there are so many versions of the pineapple range because this is quite a dynamic fragrance. The DNA is very dynamic where some people prefer the smoky notes, other people love the vanilla, other people like the balance. So one comment that I saw a few weeks ago online is that somebody had just bought one version of the fragrance and then three months later another version had come out. So there's no kind of optimal version that I'm striving for I'm producing different versions for different people and with the dozen or so now versions that we have in the range there'll be one for everyone 
Agria asks, what is the essence of a great fragrance in your opinion? Um, I like fragrances which have a lot going on, which are very dynamic, and there's a journey from the top to the mid to the base notes. So I don't really like fragrances that are too linear. Um, I like fragrances that have development, and that very often involves having you know, notes that are very different, but are also blended in the correct proportions so that they harmonize. Thank you very much, Damien. Fascinating to see the man behind the brand. Uh, I know they've got quite a few new ones that I've been sampling some of those. I'm going to put another review up. There. I am, I, to be honest, I'm finding it hard to keep up with all their new releases, but I know that the brand really does seem to have a lot of respect from people online. Uh, the packaging on the fragrances is excellent. They're not the cheapest uh, of fragrances of this type, but the quality is very high and I, I do respect them a lot. Of course, I should stress they do send me things for free but that's the only inducement I get here to, to put their stuff on my channel. And, you know, I'm not short of fragrances, so I, I don't, you know, it's no huge incentive, although I do enjoy getting them free, but it wouldn't make me say nice things if they weren't really good. So please do bear that in mind. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll join you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.